Good morning. It's good to see you all here. We're here every Sunday at 11 if you'd like to come back anytime. Welcome to those of you who are joining us from home this morning. We're delighted that you can be with us. And kids, we're so glad that you're here with us today. The Easter Bunny has already hidden all the eggs, but no cheating, don't get them before after church if you're looking around now. Friends out of darkness and grief and despair comes a message of hope. Christ is risen. We run to the tomb ourselves, and it is true. Christ is risen. We hear a voice call our names, and we know whose voice it is. Christ is risen. It is with us now. He is with us now. God is with us now. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Let us worship our living God. I invite you to rise in body or spirit. Friends on Zoom, I direct your attention to the chat window. And let us raise our voices in cheerful song this Easter morning.
Please join with me in prayer. The Easter colic is printed in your bulletin and in the chat window. Let us pray together. God of glory, in the rising of Jesus Christ, you have shattered death's grip and set us on a path to freedom. We rejoice in the promise of this new day. Fill our souls with love and hope. Strengthen us for works of justice and mercy. Teach us to live as a resurrected and resurrecting people, open to the promise of each new dawn. Through Jesus Christ, amen. Friends, we gather today as the one body of the living God. We gather together today for hope and peace and above all for love. This is the good news which we come to share. The peace of Christ be with you. Christ is risen. Alleluia. Let us share the peace of Christ in words of greeting with one another now, turning to a neighbor near you, typing into the chat, or giving a friendly, socially distanced wave. Peace be with you. Please join me in the prayer of illumination. Let the words of our mouths and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. From Isaiah chapter 65, beginning at verse 17. For I am about to create new heavens and a new earth. The former things shall not be remembered or come to mind, but be glad and rejoice forever in what I am creating. For I am about to create Jerusalem as a joy and its people as a delight. I will rejoice in Jerusalem and delight in my people. No more shall the sound of weeping be heard in it or the cry of distress. No more shall, shall there be in it an infant that lives but a few days or an old person who does not live out a lifetime. For one who dies at a hundred years will be considered a youth and one who falls short of a hundred will be considered accursed. They shall build houses and inhabit them. They shall plant vineyards and eat their fruit. They shall not build and another inhabit. They shall not plant and another eat. For like the days of a tree shall the days of my people be. And my chosen shall long enjoy the work of their hands. They shall not labor in vain or bear children for calamity. For they shall be offspring blessed by the Lord and their descendants as well. Before they call, I will answer. While they are yet speaking, I will hear. The wolf and the lamb shall feed together. The lion shall eat straw like the ox. But the serpent, its food shall be dust. They shall not hurt or destroy on all my holy mountain, says the Lord. From the book of John, chapter 20. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. And so she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, they have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciple set out and went towards the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. 
Then Simon Peter came following him and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple who reached the tomb first also went in and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. And they said to her, woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, they have taken away my Lord and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, woman, why are you weeping? For whom are you looking? Supposing him to be the gardener, he said to him, sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary, she turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabuni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, do not hold on to me because I have not yet ascended to the father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I'm ascending to my father and your father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. Word of God for the people of God. It was three years ago, three years ago, when we last gathered here with trumpets and timpani and lilies and children and Easter eggs to celebrate the resurrection. Looking back, I've been thinking about how we took that Easter Sunday for granted, how maybe we took every Easter Sunday for granted, how many things we took for granted. Back then, resurrection came once a year like clockwork. Easter Sunday was tried and true. There's the Vidor, and Jesus Christ is risen today in lilies and children and chocolate bunnies. Every year. It's what we do. It's what we've been doing. It was Easter. Except that since 2019, it hasn't been. Two years of being thrown off course, of making do and doing our Zoom best. Two years of what had always been true was no longer true. Two years that have felt in so many ways like an unending Lenten, like every day a new Good Friday, every day staring death right down the block. And yet here we are, here you all are in so many ways, in new ways that weren't possible three years ago. Here we are, some of you here in your Easter finery in this sanctuary which feels like home or maybe a new place that you wanna check out again. We're so glad you're here. And some of you in your Easter finest pajamas at home in a new sanctuary that you've discovered, and I'm so glad you're here. So many new ways of doing resurrection. However you have found yourselves here, here we are. Here we are. Here we are, a changed church from when we were last here, and not without our losses. Here we are, a people that have come looking for, well, for what? Exactly. Here we are, COVID-worn and not without our bruises. And we hear this story that Mark read to us from Pennsylvania, right here on West 77th Street this morning, that Mark read to us this story from the Gospel of John about how early on the morning of that first day of the week, 
Mary Magdalene came to a tomb where Jesus had been laid, looking for Jesus. This is where I left him. He should be here. But she didn't find him. Not the way that she had expected, anyway. And not at first. What did you come here looking for today? When you logged in to Zoom or crossed the threshold here, what did you come expecting? Have you found it? Was it all just as you expected? Did you come looking for Easter of 2019 or Easter of 2020 or Easter of 2021, hoping to find the past among the present? Have we come looking for tradition or connection or an old friend? Early on the morning of that first week, Mary went looking for what she thought she knew, the body of her friend that had been brutally executed just two days before, and she didn't find it. If you thought you knew what you were coming here looking for today, maybe you won't find it either. And this is the thing about resurrection. It's not what we know or what we think we know. It's not what we expect. It doesn't come on demand. If these COVID years have taught us anything, if the current uptick in our city that has some of our friends here today worshiping at home rather than in this sanctuary, if we have learned anything over two years, is that try as we might, we have little control over the timing of when new life will come, or how. Mary went looking for the dead, where the dead are supposed to be. How did she know that he was not dead, but alive in a new way? How do each of us know, creatures of habit that we are, lovers of tradition, heirs of this is how it's done? How often do we go looking for the dead in our lives? expecting to find the past, only to be met with the present. What does an Easter faith, the faith of this day, what does resurrection mean to us if this is what we do? Sad and confused, staying back after the two guys that she was with, the two brave guys who got there first, they had run, they left. There alone in the tomb is the woman, Mary entered that tomb, and she found it not empty at all. There, sitting on the place where the body was supposed to be, were two angels dressed all in white. Why are you weeping, they ask her. Which, for those of you who know anything about care or empathy, this is not the question that you ask the grieving. Angels should have known better. And just after they ask her, she then turns around to find a third strange man has entered the room behind her, and he asks the question again, woman, why are you weeping? And perhaps a little tired of how these three men don't get it, and the two guys that she came with had deserted her, maybe she's starting to get a little upset. And she begs this third man to tell her simply, where have you taken him She didn't know it was Jesus. We very seldomly do. And the third man's reply was simply, Mary. And in that moment, she recognized that it was Jesus, and joy overcame her. Let's recap that story really quickly. Mary goes looking for the body of a man she watched die on a cross on Friday. The body isn't there, but there are these two incredibly beautiful men dressed all in white, angels they're called, who can't understand why she's upset. Then a third man sneaks into the tomb and again fails to understand the calamity that has befallen this poor woman. Looking back on it, it's an odd scene. Jesus sneaks into a tomb to confront Mary, angels failing to understand human emotion. Three men and a woman walk into a tomb. It's odd, right? 
maybe it's a little surprising. Certainly, it's not what we think of now when we think of change management theory or how to effectively grow the church. Some better communication would have been more helpful, angels. Hey, Jesus, maybe begin with a memo or at least an introduction of who you are. Don't sneak up on people. The disciples certainly should have received a calendar invite prior to Sunday morning to tell them they didn't want to miss this meeting, but they did. There's a lot that could have gone really differently. A lot that didn't need to, to change the course of the world. Why do we look for the living among the dead? Why do we look for what is past in the future? Human nature, then and now. We want our city back the way it was before COVID. We want our church back the way it was whenever you thought it was perfect, but I guarantee you there are as many ideas of that date as there are people here. We want our lives back before the pandemic. We want our old friends back. We want the people who have died back. I want them back. We want it all back exactly the way we left it. Or at least the way that we thought we knew we left it. What did we know then that we don't know now? What do we know now that we didn't know then that we couldn't have imagined? How has life changed? Like it or not, it has. In the day of resurrection that is still to come, the prophet Isaiah tells us, the former things shall not be remembered or come to mind. And this is a sign of grace and of forgiveness, of faith and of hope. It may feel impossible. It's how God works. And in that day, which could be this day, it could be this resurrection day, God tells God's people to be glad and to rejoice in what I, your God, am creating new for you this day. Rejoice, for I am creating your city as a joy, and I am creating you, my people, as a delight to me. Notice that God is not telling us to be joyful about the things that God has already created. God isn't resting on the laurels of the daffodils and the bird song and the sunrise and all the beauty that we knew when we came in this morning. God is telling us to delight in what is not yet, but is coming soon, what God is creating right now in our midst, with us, calling our names. Delight and find joy in that. Find joy in what is new. People of God, this is not our strong suit. God's endless imagination is something we love on paper. We love it for other people. We love it for big problems that we can't fix, like poverty and war and racism. God, do a new thing for all those things. But me, I'm fine. God's endless imagination is something that gets a little too real the closer to home it gets. When a new thing starts happening in our lives, we start getting nervous. But resurrection is not always about the big things. Sometimes it's about the little things. Like a butterfly flapping its wings. Little resurrection, the return of an old friend, the return to a sanctuary. The gift of a new way of working or of coming to church. The hug or a meal that we can share the smile that we can see, a little resurrection, like a little butterfly, can change the world. Standing in the tomb, Mary calls out in pain, and Jesus calls out her name. Mary, he says, and it's as if the scales fall from her eyes. She recognizes Jesus in the sound of her own name. She recognizes Jesus because they have a relationship. They know each other. She's heard her name called a million times before by that beloved. She knows what it sounds like 
and all those countless years of knowing him and knowing him through and through, she knows it's him in that moment. Psychologists know that the brain lights up in specific and highly active ways when we hear our own names. Babies giggle at the sound of it. Dogs come bounding to it. Cats generally ignore it. And said sweetly by ones who love us, our name can soften us. It can comfort us. It can help us. And that's how I think Jesus said Mary that day. Softly and tenderly, the hymn tells us, Jesus called to Mary that day. And in an instant, she knew that what she had been looking for was gone and would never come back. And in its place was something new and known and loved. What is past is not what is future. God is doing a new thing. And here Jesus says, Mary. And maybe Jesus says your name today, too. I know it does. Maybe you'll hear it in the trumpets or the lilies. Maybe you'll hear it not in metaphor, but by the sound of a young child getting their first Easter egg in the hunt to follow. Maybe you'll hear it around a dinner table. Softly and tenderly, Jesus is calling. I have seen the Lord, she proclaims, as she rejoins the disciples later that morning. I have seen the Lord, she says, and she knows the world has changed. I have seen the Lord. What is past is no more. Death has lost its sting. Weeping is no more. I have seen the Lord, she says, and there is joy and there is delight in what new thing God is doing. Jesus knows all of your names, each of them. The ones your parents gave you, the ones you choose among chosen family, the ones that save you, the one that is whispered by your beloved on a pillow that makes you a little uncomfortable, the one that your children call you, the one that your grandchildren call you, your name. Maybe you'll hear it here again today. Listen. Maybe it'll be an old friend on the sidewalk calling out or a new friend asking, what's your name? And as you hear it, as you listen today, as you listen for signs of resurrection, see what scales might fall from your eyes and what simple truth is standing right in front of you that you need to see. What new thing is it? What creation is God giving to you for this day of joy? And what new thing is God giving to you so that God may take delight every day? I have seen the Lord, Mary proclaimed. May you see the Lord this day, too. Happy Easter. Do not look for the living among the dead. Christ is alive. Christ is alive indeed. Alleluia.
Hello. Welcome to worship at West End Church on this glorious Easter Sunday morning. No matter who you are, no matter where you come from, no matter where you've been on life's journey, you are so very welcome here. And we are so glad that you are here to celebrate resurrection with us today. If you are a visitor with us this morning, a very joyful welcome to you. If you are on Zoom this morning, we encourage you to say hello in the chat window. And if you're with us in the sanctuary, please take a moment to stick around after service and say hello to us. We would love to welcome you and tell you more about us. If you need to contact us for any reason, you are always welcome to email us at pastors at westendchurch.org. Soon we will pray together and for one another. If you are online this morning, prayer requests can be made to William Kritzman in the chat window, and they will be read aloud later during the prayers of the church. If you are in the sanctuary this morning, Pastor Bridget will soon call for your prayer request to be spoken aloud during the prayers of the church. Well, here we are indeed. Friends, we have not been able to celebrate an Easter in the sanctuary with our doors open since April 21st, 2019, nearly three years ago. And what a joyful morning it is. I want to offer a special thank you and welcome to the musicians who are helping to make it such a joyful morning this morning. Uh, to Henry, to the choir, to the orchestra, thank you so much for giving us your gifts this morning. Also a friendly reminder that tomorrow is a holiday for our clergy and staff. They will be taking a well-deserved day off and the church building will be closed. Following our service, I want to encourage everyone to gather in the sunshine on the front steps for some hot cross buns and some fellowship. Not only is today a beautiful day to be outside, but immediately following service, there will be an Easter egg hunt in the sanctuary. So for the young and the young of heart, please gather at the back of the sanctuary following service if you would like to look for, hunt for some Easter eggs. By way of announcements, we don't have much this morning, but uh, a reminder that the book club will be meeting this Friday on April 22nd. They will be discussing the book, The Book Woman of Troublesome Creek by Kim Michelle Richardson. You can find details and a link to uh, that gathering on our website at westendchurch.org slash calendar. Our adult education is still taking a short break, but mark your calendars for its return on May the 1st at 9.30 in the morning. On this glorious morning of new beginnings, we reflect in gratitude on the gifts that we have and we prayerfully consider the needs of this church. Offerings can be made by going to westendchurch.org slash give or by texting WESTENDNYC to 833-868-3359. If you are here in the sanctuary with us this morning, offerings may be placed in the plates in the back as you depart. Let us continue our worship by offering our gifts and ourselves. It is praying time, church. It is one of my great privileges and surprises about West End and how seriously you all take prayer. Let us go to God right now. Gracious and loving God, we are here, some of us in pain, but we are praising. We are bruised, but we are blessed. We are blessed when we come out and blessed when we go in. We are blessed in the city and in the field. We lift our hearts, we open our mouths, and we sing our laments to you on this, this Easter morning, when we are gathered together once again. There are some prayers in the chat window. Janice asked for prayers for Secure, who has endured a huge disappointment. We know that she has been struggling with trying to achieve and succeed in the dance world, so we lift her this morning. We continue to pray for those who are in the medical and the education fields as they struggle to continue to do their work through this pandemic. 
I would ask for those who are here in the sanctuary, if there are any prayers on your heart, to lift them now. What are the prayers of the church? And you can just yell it out. Thank you, Rosa. Prayers for Jerry. Yes, Henry. <laughs> Amen. Prayers for this new paint job and this sanctuary that holds all of us both online and in person. Amen. We can say amen to that. I lift prayers for our families here who are grieving loss recently. We are so grateful that people are here from far and away. People who we have seen snuggled on couches who are here in person. I am grateful for those here. I saw Narvi, what are the... Amen, prayers from Narvi, amen. Oh, for Miss Jewel, yes. Our dear sister, Miss Jewel, we lift prayers for her as well. Julia Turner asked for prayers as well for peace in the Ukraine and everywhere. There's trouble all over the world. These are the prayers of the church. Lord, we lift our hearts, we open our mouths, and we cry out, my God, my God, why have you forsaken us? But we know that we are not forsaken. Now let us say the prayer that you taught Jesus to say, our creator who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now, we encourage you in body or spirit to rise and still masked to join us in the Hallelujah Chorus.
place to the next, knowing that God is with you, that there is nowhere you can go that is away from God's presence, and that presence is alive. It is alive as the breath that courses through your veins, the very breath that God first breathed into you, calling you by name, calling you beloved, calling you gods. Go in peace, beloved, to love and serve each other and our living God. Amen.